Thanks again for joining me here at Preaching the Gospel that Saves, the station that is dedicated to our Apostle Paul's My Gospel, the Gospel of the Grace of God, the Gospel of Christ, which is the power of God unto salvation. And Paul's My Gospel is not spoken by Peter. Peter never calls it his gospel. It's not spoken by James. James never calls it his gospel. And it's not spoken by John. John never calls it his gospel either. Only Paul calls it my gospel, his gospel, because it was only given to him by the Lord Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery in Acts chapter 9. And here is the gospel of the grace of God. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. That's right, it's only in 1 Corinthians. It's not in James. It's not in Peter's writings. It's not in John's writings. It's not in Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John either. It's not found from Genesis all the way to the cross. It's not found in Acts chapter 2 all the way up to Acts chapter 9. And it's not found in Hebrews to Revelation. Paul's my gospel. Did you ever notice that? Did you ever notice that you can't even find Peter after Acts 15? Have you ever noticed that too? Or, I know, I know, you haven't noticed any of this stuff because the Bible's just a devotional self-help book for you, right? You're in every page of the Bible. Your name, it's all about you, and Proverbs is 31 daily devotions according to the days of the month. Well, I'm sorry, you've been taught horribly wrong. It's time to be a Bible believer, but first you have to trust Paul's My Gospel, the will of God today is that all men will be saved, okay? And that's 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 3 and 4. So it's just 1, 2, 3, and 4. It's real easy to remember. God's will today is that all men will be saved, okay? And once you're saved, hopefully you come unto the knowledge of the truth. Because my hope is that there's a lot of people saved, but I don't know. And they just don't know the knowledge of the truth. They trust the gospel, which you can see Paul's my gospel on the back of someone's car on a bumper sticker. Trust it, you're saved. But coming under the knowledge of the truth, that's a whole nother story. So, so trust Paul's my gospel, not Peter, James, or John's, not Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John's. And here it is only in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if you keep in memory that I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all, which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. Now notice, if, you're, if you think Peter is preaching the same as Paul, they preach the same Gospels, well tell me if the death, burial, and resurrection is in Peter's. Acts 2.38, Then Peter said unto them, and who's the them? Is that us? Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So tell your Pentecostals, that that's not the gospel that saves anyone. There's no death, burial, burial, or resurrection, or payment for sins in what Peter says in Acts 2.38. Oops! So if you're trusting that, you're not saved. It's as simple as that. That is not the gospel of God's grace. So I've been going through Ray Comfort's book, What Hollywood Believes, okay? And I've talked about different people and what they believe, you know, Michael Jackson, Dolly Parton, Tom Cruise, Billy Ray Cyrus, Bill Gates, those are a few that I've gone through. But if you look at, and if you don't know who Ray Comfort is, he has a ministry called The Way of the Master, and I've done some preaching about his gospel tracks that have no gospel. And Kirk Cameron is also a part of this ministry. He may not be anymore, but, you know, Kirk Cameron is a celebrity Christian, and Ray, Comfort, and, it, and Ray Comfort's ministry is out of Australia. 
And what he fails to mention in his books called The Way of the Master is the way of the Master would be that Jesus Christ would tell you to follow the Apostle Paul. But he does not say that in his books. But in his conclusion of this book that I've gone through, What Hollywood Believes, on page 173, the following is a list of celebrities who have gone before us. It is very sobering to read their names, each of which stirs warm memories. Yet they are all dead and gone. Think about that. We still admire them, but their fame means nothing to them now. They are gone forever. They are in eternity. The only thing that matters is, what did they do with Jesus Christ? Alan Hale Jr., actor, cancer, died January 2nd, 1990. Barbara Stanwyck, actress, died January 20th, 1990. Ava Gardner, actress, pneumonia, died January 25th, 1990. Sammy Davis Jr., actor, singer, cancer, died May 16th, 1990. Danny Thomas, actor, producer, heart attack, died February 6, 1991. Michael Landon, actor, cancer, died July 1st, 1991. Lee Remick, actress, cancer, died July 2nd, 1991. Red Fox, actor, heart attack, died October 11th, 1991. Fred McMurray, actor, pneumonia, died November 5th, 1991. Chuck Connors, actor, cancer, died November 10th, 1992. Audrey Hepburn, actress, cancer, died January 20th, 1993. Andre the Giant, wrestler, actor, died January 27th, 1993. Stuart Granger, actor, cancer, died August 16th, 1993. Raymond Burr, actor, cancer, died September 12th, 1993. Vincent Price, actor, Cancer died October 25th, 1993. Bill Bixby, actor, director, cancer died November 21st, 1993. Cesar Romero, actor, died January 1st, 1994. Pat Buttram, actor, kidney failure, died January 8th, 1994. And the list goes on. Telly Savalas, Kojak, right? Actor, cancer, died January 22nd, 1994. John Candy, Actor, comedian, heart attack, died, died March 4th, 1994. And the list goes on. And I'm not going to go through the whole list, but he has about another two dozen actors, actresses who have died. And then on page 175, this is what he says. And I want you to ask yourself, is this the gospel? And then maybe give Ray Comfort an email or maybe even give him a call and ask him, what the gospel is, because this is what he says. It is my sincere hope that you have made peace with God through trusting in Jesus Christ. Becoming a Christian is the most incredible event that will ever take place in your life. If you have obeyed the gospel by turning from your sins and placing your trust in Jesus Christ, you have found everlasting life. So he just told you right there the gospel, a gospel, because he doesn't tell you what it is, that damns your never-dying soul. Isn't that nice? So, I just wanted to point that out, because when you go through his book, What Hollywood Believes, what's sad is, is when he interviewed all those actors and actresses, he never told them the gospel that saves. And it's no different than this, as we conclude more than a carpenter, over 15 million copies sold by Josh McDowell and Sean McDowell. We've gone through six parts so far, and we have not found the clarity of the gospel of God's grace at all. They mix the death, burial, burial and resurrection with Israel's law works, with confessing with your mouth, with praying the sinner's prayer. Thus, never thus frustrating the grace of God, right? Galatians chapter 2, verse 21. If you frustrate the grace of God, then Christ's death on the cross is in vain. Do you get that? Galatians 2, 21. 
Let's take a look at it real quick. I don't have it written down, so I'm going to go to it right now. It's real clear. When you put Paul's My Gospel and mix it with that of the Twelve, mix it from Acts chapters 1 through 8, mix it from Hebrews to Revelation, you make the cross of Christ of none effect. You make the cross, you make Christ's death in vain. Galatians 2.21, I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Titus 3.5, it's not by our righteousness, it's by his mercy he saved us. Galatians 2.16, it's not by the law, no flesh shall be justified by the law. Ephesians 2.8 and 9, it's not of yourselves, and it's not of works, and there's no boasting. It is a gift of God. So, praying the sinner's prayer, asking Jesus in your heart, making Jesus the Lord of your life, confessing with your mouth, all of that is works. Your works, righteous works, law works, thus making the cross of Christ, his death, in vain. Okay? You need to get this right. So here is the last in... Josh McDowell's horrendous, no gospel book, More Than a Carpenter. The question he asks is, what do you think? In research, is research a hindrance to one's faith in Christ? Not according to Edwin Yamuchi, one of the world's leading experts in ancient history. Yamuchi, who holds several degrees from Brandy, is empathetic. And one pastor would say, wow, he has more degrees than a thermometer. For me, the historical evidence has reinforced my commitment to Jesus Christ as the Son of God who loves us and died for us and was raised from the dead. It's that simple. And they should have stopped right there. Because he's got it right. But he doesn't tell you it's the gospel that saves your never dying soul. Okay? When asked if historical New Testament scholarship had weakened his faith, ancient manuscript authority Bruce Metzger immediately replied, It has built it. I've asked questions all my life. I've dug into the text. I've studied this thoroughly. And today I know with confidence that my trust in Jesus has been well-placed, very well-placed. So what does that mean? Trust in Jesus. God who loves us, died for us, was raised from the dead. It's that simple. But what is that? Do they ever tell you what that is? Do they ever tell you the importance of trusting that? He says, I, that my trust in Jesus has been well placed. What does that mean? Quotations such as these from two respected scholars. Okay, but what does that mean? They're quotations. What do they mean? They never tell you. Just like they tell you, a better rendering is in the Greek. That's what they tell you. Well, which Greek? Which Greek text are they talking about? There are thousands, but they never tell you. Or they say it, it's better in the originals, which no one has. Quotations such as these from two respected scholars affirm my purpose in writing this little book. I have tried to show you that the claims of Christ stand firm as solid historical facts, confirmed by the evidence of history, prophecy, and reason. Notice that. Is there anything about the revelation of the mystery? No. History, prophecy, and reason. Like I said, in other messages, take Paul's writings out of your Bible, and it's all of Israel's prophecy, okay? That is basically what your so-called church preaches and teaches every Sunday. They preach a Bible without Paul, without the body of Christ, every Sunday. And that, again, is what this book endorses. 95% of your Bible is Israel's program, is Israel's prophetic program. So it's no wonder why they miss the 5%, the Pauline epistles, the message for the body of Christ.
understanding the facts will give you a solid, dependable foundation to stand on as you experience, is that Blackaby, experience, experiencing God? Yeah. Experience Christ's claims for yourself in the kind of changed lives that I and millions of other Christians have experienced. Now, we went through parts one through six, and if you have not, I would encourage you to do. The changed lives that he talks about is this. I was, a, I was an alcoholic, now I'm not. I used to say bad words, now I don't. I used to be an angry person, now I'm not. Let me ask you a question, dear listener. Hopefully you're saved, you trust Paul's my gospel. So dear Christian, let me ask you a question. Can an unsaved person stop drinking alcohol? Can an unsaved person stop being angry? Can an unsaved person person stop swearing but that's what he talks about as being a Christian he doesn't understand that behavior has nothing to do with being a Christian when it comes to your soul's salvation it's trusting in Christ's death, burial, and resurrection you're born a sinner Psalm 51 you're already condemned your soul's already on its way to hell from the time you're born. Born a sinner. Hmm. But in spite of the firmness of the facts and the authenticity of the experience, Christianity is not something you can shove down anyone's throat. You can't force Christ on anyone. You've got to live your life and I've got to live mine. All of us are free to make our own decisions. All I can do is tell you what I've learned, and that, what you do, and after that, what you do is up to you. So he told us what he learned, okay? Did he tell you anything about Jesus Christ according to the Revelation of the Mystery in this seven-part series? Seven hours, well, each message is about a half hour, okay? So you're talking hours of time we spent going through this chapter in his book called What Do You Think? And this person never talks about Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery. This guy never talks about Ephesians 3, 9, making all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery. And this guy never talks about rightly dividing the word of truth. Those are the three things that you can use to make sure you have a sound assembly. Okay? Are they teaching Jesus Christ, preaching Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery? And you can use that to make sure what you're reading is right. Are they telling you, are they making all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery? Ephesians 3, 9 and 2 Timothy 2, 15. Are they teaching you how to be approved unto God, a skilled workman, rightly dividing the word of truth? This person has not mentioned any of those things, let alone telling you what the gospel of God's grace is with clarity. And this is how he concludes. Are you ready? You ready for the gospel of God's grace? Not. Perhaps the prayer I prayed will help you. Ah, but if it's not of yourselves, Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, how is this going to help me? Lord Jesus, I need you. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. Forgive me and cleanse me. Did you notice that? The death on the cross is what forgives us. 2 Corinthians 5, 17-21 He reconciled the world to himself by the death on the cross. Romans 5, 10 So he doesn't even understand what Christ did on the cross because he's asking him to forgive him after he died on the cross. <laughs> forgive me and cleanse me? Where, where does he get the cleanse from? Is that 1 John 1, 9? Some pastors call that the Christian bar of soap. Who is John preaching to? Who is John a minister to? Galatians 2, 9. I'll, I'll give you a hint. Galatians 2, 9. And Matthew chapter 10, who was John sent to? 
Oh, the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Who was John a minister to? Galatians 2.9. Oh, the circumcision. Why would he quote something from John? At this very moment, I trust you as Savior and Lord. Make me the type of person you created me to be. In Christ's name, amen. So when you trust Paul's my gospel, what does God make you? 2 Corinthians, again, 5, 17 through 21. He makes you a new creature. He gives you, he makes you an ambassador, and he gives you a ministry of reconciliation. Without going to seminary, imagine that. It's a free gift. Thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. It's unfortunate that you never, ever hear about his unspeakable gift in the book, More Than a Carpenter. So this concludes our study of Josh McDowell, Sean, Sean McDowell's poor workmanship, unskilled workmanship of More Than a Carpenter. I hope this helps you in your... ambassadorship as you learn how to rightly divide the word of truth. When people such as Josh McDowell and Sean McDowell put out books when they don't even understand their Bible, it is sad that they think that they're helping God when it comes to saving people's never dying souls. Because they're not. So thanks again for listening. Email me with any doctrinal questions from my website, from the contact page, at preachingthegospelthatsaves.com. If you have not yet, please subscribe to my two YouTube channels, subscribe to my bookstore blog from my website, and check out my study as we go through Ephesians. Thanks again.